Well, today is a very amazing day. I never thought that I'd live to see this day. Back when I was a kid and I first started playing with model trains and becoming interested in all things railroad, I fell in love with a locomotive called the Big Boy. And it was pretty easy to fall in love with it because it was the biggest steam locomotive that had ever been built. Union Pacific built about 25 of these things back in the day toward the end of World War II and they were in service through the 1950s or so when they were pulled out of service. Well, one of them is back on the tracks today. It's not under its own power, but it's being towed up to Cheyenne, Wyoming, where it's going to be restored. The Union Pacific Railroad operates a steam restoration facility in Cheyenne. They have, oh gee, I don't know, over half a dozen steam locomotives there. Two of them actually run, a northern and a rather large Challenger, almost as big as this big boy. But for a couple of decades, people have been talking about big boys. Why don't you guys get a big boy running again? One of the best big boys was in the collection of the Railway and Locomotive Historical Society, who have their collection at the fairgrounds at Pomona, the LA County Fairplex. They refer to this place as the Rail Giants Train Museum. They have quite a few locomotives in the collection, but their pride and joy was 4014, one of the 25 Union Pacific big boys, and the railroad was able to talk them out of it to restore. The locomotive was semi-disassembled in Southern California and inspected and all of the bearings and surfaces lubricated. Lubrication is really critical on all steam locomotives, but especially on a monster like this where there's over a million pounds of weight pressing down on these wheel bearings and wheels. That second horn was the actual whistle on the locomotive. They've put pressurized air to it so that they can blow the whistle. The locomotives were designed in 1941 and some of them went into production right away. But because of the war, there was some difficulty in building all of them. But they were all built before 1945. The train also consists of some passenger cars. They have over 50 restored passenger cars at Cheyenne. No point having restored locomotives if you don't have restored passenger cars. There's also some other support vehicles here that support some of their other antiques like their rotary snowplow. They have to stop every hundred miles or so to completely lubricate the locomotive. This is normal even when the things are running under their own power. But in this case, they're going through and lubricating all of the bearings and filling the oilers, which have been kind of jury-rigged with a bicycle chain here as a lot of the side mechanism has been removed. It takes almost a half an hour to go completely around this thing and lubricate all of the moving parts that need manual lubrication.
My friend Mike Niederhauser and I used to go chase steam locomotives about 15 years ago. We were out there all the time doing that and we just sort of got away from it. So Mike and I went off to chase this thing on its way to Salt Lake City and boy was that a lot of fun and so much like the old days when we used to do this together. We sold those videos under the name of Madam Wu Video, and hey, they're out again. If you're looking for them, you can check our website. We met the train in Milford, and when we got there, there was about 30 people chasing the train. But the farther north we went, more and more people joined into the entourage. By the time we got to Salt Lake, I would guesstimate that there was about 4,000 people chasing the train. A locomotive this long has a hard time going through any kind of curves, and so these engines were built in what's called an articulated manner, meaning that the front set of driving wheels is foldable compared to the rear set of drive wheels. They're on a hinge pin so that they can go around the corners independently of the frame of the locomotive. There hasn't been a big boy on Union Pacific track since 1962 when they were all pulled out of service. And here we are 50 years later, and there's one right there running on the tracks. They're estimating that it's going to take five years to get this guy up and running, and then when it comes through, it'll be under its own power. But even though it's being towed, this is one impressive sight, I have got to tell you. It's going through to Salt Lake City tonight, and it will be on display there tomorrow. And then it's going to be heading for Ogden, and I'm going to be chasing right alongside it. From there, it heads to Green River, Wyoming, and then finally home to Cheyenne, where it used to reside and where it's going to be completely rebuilt. Well, in Salt Lake City, the engine was put on display, and tomorrow it's heading for Ogden, and I'm going to chase it that will be next week's show, so be sure you tune in to check that out. I'm hoping to chase it well into Wyoming. Well, there you have it, the Union Pacific Big Boy, the largest locomotive ever built. I sure never thought that I would live to see one of those things rolling down the track. And here in about five years, we should see one rolling down the track under its own power, and that's going to be incredibly impressive. Well, I'm going to chase the, uh, the train tomorrow as well up into Wyoming, and that'll be next week's show. So uh, go to the channel. You'll notice there's a link right down here that says Toy Man Television, and that'll take you over to the channel. And from there, you can subscribe. And you can go over to Facebook and like me on Facebook, too, and that's all very good. And tell your friends about this stuff. I'm not sure how you found this movie on the Internet. I sure hope you didn't find it boring. And I'll see you here again next week with a little more big boy messing around. See you then.